Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Arco Linux. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. I've started to go through the desktop, and the first thing I noticed is this default background seems to be straight out of Mac OS, the Yosemite version. As you can see here, it kind of looks like El Capitan in the background. And I'd venture to say this is the exact wallpaper that they used in uh, the Mac OS Yosemite version. Another interesting thing that I've noticed about this Arco Linux distribution seems to be that it lends from all the different types of platforms here. You got the dock that you would expect in Mac OS, although it's on the side. They had a clear room for the bottom here, which resembles sort of uh, Windows, the Windows operating system. Uh, you have a start menu if you click here on the left and then a taskbar here on the right side and you can switch workspaces on the lower right as well as save stuff in the background like files. And of course we know this is a Linux distribution. So let's uh, look through some of these uh, operating system components here for Arco Linux and get a feel for what's included with this operating system. If we look to the dock over here on the left we have the Thunar file manager. So let's go ahead and open up their file manager here. And we have the normal desktop documents, downloads, all the little sub folders that you would expect in a home folder. And the home is uh, Savvy Nick because that's the user I created. You also have a place to browse the network and connect network devices if you want. And if we hit the file system, you see the root folder and it looks like it has different icons for different abilities. So root seems like it has an X, maybe you can't access that with the current user. Now, if we go back to the Savvy Nick folder, we'll go through and look at what we options we have in the top left file. So you can create new tabs, as many tabs as you want. This is always great to have if you're working in multiple places in the file manager. In edit, you can do basic things like select all files, find patterns. As far as the view goes, we can zoom in if you would like to see bigger icons. Default back to that normal size and view different types of lists here. So we got a compact list and a detailed list here. Detail just shows you some more information. If you hit the go drop down, you'll be able to quickly go between places that are favored and open up a location. Help is just to help you out more with the file manager if need be. Overall, it's a nice dark color here with white lettering. I, I think their file manager has everything that you really need. Uh, I don't see an, an advanced way to search for files, let's say by size or things that it contains or possibly text that's contained in files. I'm probably just missing it, but that's just something to be aware of. You do have a reload button if you need to hit it up here in the right. Let's go ahead and exit out of the file manager at this point. One thing I did notice is that if you right click, you are able to get a list of shortcuts here and you can open a folder as a root user if you want to. And there's various other options like the desktop settings and to arrange desktop icons. One thing I like about this is you can actually create a document on the desktop background, which I think is great. Some Linux distributions do not allow you to do this. So I'll go ahead and show you this. We'll just create a new test file. And once we create it, you can see here we've created the test file and we can move it all around the desktop. There's also other options in here you can create a shortcut using the launcher or create a URL link to uh, search for something on the web. We'll go back to the doc. So the next thing is actually Termite, which is their default terminal. We'll load that up real quick. I think this is kind of cool. They got the Arch Linux logo here in the background or perhaps the Arco Linux logo in the background here. And just a couple of things over here on the right side. It tells you uh, current memory usage as well as information about the CPU and your graphics card, what resolution is currently being used, the uptime, and a whole bunch of other things here. Very cool. Now, let's go ahead and use this for a moment if we type in sudo su. So I'm glad that that kind of goes away as you're using it. That way you have more room to see. 
going to go ahead and log in as a super user. So it reloaded this information here up at the top and it tells you that uh, what root users logged in. So root and the host name is Savvy Nick. Let's go ahead and just list all files here. So we are in the Savvy Nick directory still. You can see that by looking up here, home Savvy Nick. And what I think about this termite here is that I, I like it pretty much. Uh, I don't necessarily like the uh, transparent background. I'm sure you can change that. I don't see where you can see your options here, but uh, it does have a few if you right click on the top. I wonder if it has any more here. Not really that I can tell. So it doesn't seem too customizable, which is interesting because it does look really good and it would be really nice if you can customize some of these things in here. Another thing I'm going to look at real quick while I'm in terminal is that I'm going to look at the H top so you can see that how much CPU memory and swap space is being currently used, the amount of threads and tasks that are currently loaded. And as you can see, again, the background's transparent, so sometimes this becomes an issue with uh, lighter backgrounds where you have lighter text and they kind of blend together. So that's why I don't like transparent backgrounds. But this isn't too bad because it's a pretty dark transparent background. You have some options here at the bottom with HTOP to go ahead and kill processes, change the nice number for them, uh, get trees as well as basic setup and just quitting out of the program itself. I think there's only one last thing I'd like to look at in terminal. We'll do F10 to quit out of here. And uh, that is, does the root user's name change or does any of this change here as far as color goes? And it looks like the root user did change, but I'm gonna exit here. No, it didn't. So uh, Savvy Nick is in white and so is the root user. Sometimes distributions like to color the root user. That way you just kind of get a signal for your, you have super privileges at that point. Again, it's a little lacking in the fact that you don't have options up here in order to go ahead and edit this terminal. Um, I right click here and you can see just the basic options to minimize, maximize, zoom and stuff like that, but nothing like preferences and not even multiple tabs. I would wonder how you would create multiple tabs if you wanted to do so. We'll exit out of the terminal here. So just some information on Arco Linux. There are three different types of Arco Linux installs that you can go through and you can choose uh, an ISO image accordingly to what you want. There's an Arco Linux, an Arco Linux D, and an Arco Linux B as in beta. Arco Linux is their normal workstation, which comes with everyday tools. Arco Linux D is a minimal installation that comes with a desktop environment. Arco Linux D is a minimal installation that doesn't even come with a desktop environment, as you see here. And Arco Linux B is a custom install package where you can tailor your Arco Linux install with various packages and desktop environments. It's pretty cool. So we'll continue down this uh, dock here. So it has a simple recorder. And then you have uh, Viva Dali here. Let me see if I pronounce that right. And it wants a password, so let's see here. Password, password for our new key ring. Uh, Viva Aldi. This looks like a web browser here. So if we type in google.com, yeah, very much. And you got tabs at the top here. Search for uh, Bing as their search provider, if you want to use that. We'll exit out, we're not that interested, but it does come with, that's the default web browser then, Vivaldi there. And then we have Sublime Text Editor, three for devs. This is a very nice text editing software. We'll go ahead and cancel that, we don't need to update it right now. Uh, which provides many different syntaxes that you can choose from while you're writing in this text editor. It's fairly powerful to use. Um, so you could actually write, let's see, real quick, int main. So we'll just do a simple C++ program here. See out, uh, hello world. And let's see, I'm doing that wrong, but let me fix that. See out, you're putting it out. So that's the correct method. Um, and then you can do include uh, the IO stream for this since we are not specifying a namespace, we can tell these that they're part of the standard library. 
and we want to return something so I'm just going to return zero out of this program and right now you can see that uh, it doesn't recognize the syntax because it's uh, selected as plain text but once you select that plain text you can see how many different types of formats we have here so if we select C++ you see that on the left hand side here the code updates and now you get some formatting here which is really great and that's why sublime text is great we'll go ahead and exit out of that and not worry about saving that and it looks like it, com it comes with Firefox as well so I'm not sure why it has two default web browsers or maybe I'm missing something there but Arco Linux is actually based off of the Arch Linux distribution and it supplies a desktop environment and utilities unlike the vanilla install of Arch Linux in which you have to manually install everything including the base system and that was interesting it looks like the background revolves by itself it just changed itself and this distribution is really a good pick if uh, you'd like some customization ability but you don't want to go as deep as installing everything and customizing everything on your own like you would with Arch Linux and this distribution hasn't been around for long but it's gained significant traction in a short period of time because because users who want the Arch Linux experience but don't want to deal with the install of Arch Linux have found this great alternative which is Arco Linux go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you've made it this far it really does help me out now we'll move on to the Arco Linux start menu here at the bottom left and if you go in here you can resize the start menu whatever to whatever you see fit it has your name up here the current user that is uh, logged in and then you have some subcategories here as well as a search bar on the bottom right and if we wanted to go ahead and search for termite we could and you can see this is their command line interface so that's the search bar on the bottom right and then you have the categories with all the programs in them you can hit the all and you can see all the programs that come pre-installed with this Arco Linux distribution which is quite a bit actually we can go through the individual ones here so we have accessories looks like you have a font manager, a calculator, some notes, task manager, uh, the Vim editor, Let's see what they have for development here. Atom, Genie I've used before, this is a really nice all-encompassing IDE which you can actually create projects in and deploy them as well as debug them. And then you have uh, graphics which looks like again some font, a font manager viewer and a couple other things internet you have the Firefox the Vivaldi here and Chromium so you get three different types of browsers installed with the base system that's very interesting usually they stick to one multimedia tons of multimedia as well as VLC media player this one I know is very encompassing as far as uh, video formats go and office for the office they don't really have much here you would think they would install LibreOffice for you. I'm sure you can if you want. And then settings, you have all the various settings for Arco Linux that you can change up. So let's go ahead and look at their desktop settings here to change the background. Let's see what other backgrounds they have here. One interesting thing that I just noticed is it says to change the background in blank minutes. Well, this isn't selected, although my background did just change a few moments ago so I'm not sure what happened there maybe there's a bug here in this Arco Linux distribution where it changes with or without the selection I did notice a change and it was probably 10 minutes from when I started using it so that's something that they might need to take a look at there's different types of styles here and different colors that you could use you can look in different folders for different backgrounds but as you can tell, I changed the background to another mountain wallpaper. But let's see if we can't find something else that's interesting. Let's do this Tron deal. So this is kind of cool. It's uh, Tron here. It's got this blue streak. Looks like he's breaking through some ice in the background. <laughs> you can also highlight. So you can highlight multiple items in the background and delete them if necessary. Uh, you can delete as well as uh, move to trash so if you delete you'll permanently lose a file but if you hit the trash button it'll go to trash before it gets deleted on the right hand side down here we have the calendar as well as the current user that's logged in if you click that you can log out suspend or shut down 
from here you have the ability to change the volume as well as your microphone setting. This is for wired connections. I assume that you have your wireless connection settings down here if you're on Wi-Fi. If you hit this red exclamation point, you'll get a package manager here, which uh, shows you uh, the current software updates that are available. And you can select which packages you'd like to upgrade in here. You can see what you currently have installed and all of them together if you want. We'll exit out of there. A couple other things, the clipboard, as well as this option, which just is kind of generic things you can look at here. Wonder what happens if you have history. So this kind of shows you what you've changed maybe. I'm not so sure what that history is. I'll get out of there. You have the option for preferences as well. So this is variety preferences here. Effects, manual downloading, color and size, customize, tips and tricks. I guess this is for the background or the desktop environment altogether. Maybe they call it variety, I'm not sure. Arco Linux isn't extremely popular, but it definitely has been climbing in the ranks really quick. And uh, I believe the first version was released in 2018. And it comes pre-installed with what most everyday users need and want, um, minus the fact that you don't really have an office suite. So I'll go ahead and give this a popularity rating of seven out of 10. It's simple to use, although it's a little convoluted. They're, they're going in three different directions, it seems like. They have the, uh, of course, it's a Linux distribution, but they have a dock here on the left, as well as a taskbar and a start menu. And then you can right click and do very similar things as to the other two. So with that being said, it's a little convoluted for users, but at the same token, you really have all the different types of things that people are used to using, a dock, a start menu, a taskbar, and you can go ahead and put things on the background and use the desktop background as a place to hold files. And it's so customizable that uh, I'll have to give it a user friendliness rating of eight out of 10. Arco Linux is based off of the Arch Linux distribution and it tailors itself for beginner users as well as users who want to customize their Arch Linux experience without actually having to go through the manual install that Arch Linux requires from a user and is actually more for advanced intermediate users. It, so if you really wanted to go after performance, you could go the Arch Linux route, but this does fine and it's not a minimal operating system by any means, but it gets a performance rating of six out of 10. Arco Linux is based off of Arch Linux. It can lend itself to the Arch Linux communities out there for support or packages and is on the cutting edge of releases since it's based off of Arch Linux. So if you want all sorts of different features, this is a great place to be. I'll give it a features rating of eight out of 10. Finally, since it's based off of Arch Linux, and it gives you the ability to use Arch Linux without all the manual installation and keeps up with the rolling release of Arch Linux. I think it's going to keep users intrigued with its updates as well as keep climbing in the ranks here for people that want to use Arch Linux as well as a nice distribution to go to if you want to customize without having to go through all the manual installation. So I'll go ahead and give it a sustainability rating of seven out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 36 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Arco Linux. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.